a KQED HD production. Cheese. It is a food both faithfully traditional and inventively modern. Soft, hard, fresh, or aged, a bite of cheese tickles our taste buds and awakens our senses. There's something about cheese, both in its natural form and in its melted form, that really kind of hits us. What other food can you get a taste of the food that the animal was eating, the art that went into make that bite of, of what you're eating, the science that went into it, Indeed, this crucible of creaminess has a depth that defies the simplicity of its raw ingredients. In fresh cheese, you only need salt, milk, and lactic acid bacteria, which will sour the milk. In an aged cheese, you will add a coagulant, rennet, or microbial enzymes. And those four simple ingredients can make hundreds and thousands of different types of cheese. But this feat of edible engineering, which sparks a dazzling array of shapes and flavors, owes its origins more to accident than actual invention. Cheese was by happenstance discovered thousands of years ago when a shepherd found out that they could carry fluid milk in, into the stomach of a goat. And when they added it to the stomach, then the rennet would curdle the milk which would then preserve a very unstable food, milk, into a very long-term stable food, cheese. By preserving milk in the form of cheese, the nutritional benefit of milk is also preserved. Cheese can be thought of as a superfood because of the protein content and the ability of the proteins to carry calcium. And so during digestion, it's a slow release of um, proteins that are going to go to build strong body, strong muscles, and calcium that's going to be built into bones. The average American consumes roughly 33 pounds of cheese a year. And for California, cheese is proving to be a cash cow. In 2010, the state produced more than 2 billion pounds of it, second only to Wisconsin. With so much of it being made and nibbled, scientists are also hungry to probe the crumbly contours of cheese. Cheese is incredibly scientific. Cheese is a living, dynamic food, and it changes during aging. By adding certain bacteria, we can change the direction of one common nutrient, milk, into many, many different products. The variable really is the type of bacteria that you add. Like wine, the intoxicating companion with which it is often paired, cheese is a product of fermentation. You really need to add bacteria to ferment the lactose away, the milk sugar, out of milk. And they turn the lactose into lactic acid, which is a preservative but has flavor. But during that fermentation process, they break down the fat and the protein into compounds that you then perceive in the flavor of the cheese. Cheddar cheese has a certain unique flavor profile, different than Roquefort or Camembert, because you use slightly different microbes. Yeast and mold can also be added to further color the flavor canvas of cheese. So you have this mixture, this zoo of microbes in the cheese. The yeast and mold are breaking down the fat in the cheese, and so you end up with distinct flavors the bacteria typically can't add alone. Maureen Cunney knows firsthand about the complexities of cheese. The eight kinds of cheese she and her coworkers make at Cowgirl Creamery are as much art as they are science. Artisan cheese is a craft. It's handmade. It's not made by pushing a button. It takes people to try and extract the most flavor and the most beauty out of this handmade product. The lush, rolling farmlands of Northern California provide an ideal setting for award-winning artisan cheeses. The Bay Area is unquestionably an epicenter when it comes to artisan cheese making because of the dairy history that we have in Marin and Sonoma counties, where 150 years ago there was cheese and other dairy products, milk and butter, being made, and now we're kind of going back to our roots. 
There are more artists and cheesemakers in the Bay Area than there are in any other part of California. At the Cowgirl Creamery plant in Point Ray Station, Maureen prepares to make Red Hawk, a triple cream cow's milk cheese that takes three weeks to make. First we pasteurize all the milk for all the cheeses we make. It's either at 145 for 30 minutes or 150 for 30 minutes. Pasteurization kills off good bacteria and bad bacteria like E. coli. This is where the cheesemaker can decide what cultures and bacteria to use in their cheese to develop the product they want. This is the art of making cheese. The quest to find a certain flavor or a certain texture is really the art behind it. And then we'll add the rennet, the microbial enzymes. Rennet is a natural enzyme that turns milk into a solid called curd. You can see the rennet taking action already by the look at the milk on the top. It's already starting to coagulate. When you coagulate the milk and cut it, you separate the milk into curds and whey. Whey is the liquid. The size of the curd has a huge impact on the final moisture content of the cheese. If you want to keep the moisture in your cheese, you'll cut bigger curds. So there's less surface area for the moisture, for the liquid, for the whey to come out. The curds are almost like little babies. It's like shepherding them into the world. Next, the curd is washed in hot water, which further expels whey and slows down the fermentation process. From there, the curds can be pressed into the shape of the cheese. When we add another layer, we're going to press the curd and extract more liquid and help knit the cheese together. The cheese will sit in the molds uh, for about an hour. In the morning, we'll put them in the brine. Brining is a way to add salt to a cheese. Salt, like bacteria, is a critical ingredient of cheese. Not only does salt add flavor, it also affects the growth of bacteria. The amount of salt in cheese varies widely. Cheddar, for example, is roughly 4 to 5 percent salt by weight, whereas a brine cheese like feta can contain 10 to 20 percent salt. The growing concern around high sodium diets is a call to action and ingenuity for scientists at the University of California, Davis. We wanted to understand how we can use salt concentrations and different types of salt like potassium or calcium instead of sodium so that we can have a more healthy product and still have a safe product. But reducing the salt in cheese is easier said than done. Potato chips, peanuts, and pretzels can adjust the sodium content because they have low moisture. Cheese, on the other hand, has a very high moisture content. And so as you decrease the sodium in cheese, you also then change the bacteria that are added. You change the quality of the cheese and you change the texture. So to solve the riddle of making a good tasting, low salt cheese, researchers are examining the texture of cheese up close. Even though it looks like a block of cheese and it's solid, there's actually micro holes in the cheese that allow fluid and water to migrate. That's where you need MRI and electron microscopy so you can understand how the texture is being changed over aging. We use MRI to look at feta cheese to really understand uh, how the moisture is migrating out of the cheese during the brining process and how salt is moving in. We have some very dark areas shown in this feta cheese that's brined for six days. Regions of very low moisture content or holes that would begin to form that we have in terms of the cheese that would give it some of its characteristic texture. And as artists and cheesemakers sometimes discover, salt can even help develop a whole new kind of cheese. In 2000, we had washed some of our Mount Tams in a brine solution, and it attracts the growth of another bacteria called B. linens. And uh, B. linens is a, a beautiful red bacteria that makes stinky cheese stinky. And it developed this red brine. And this was an accident. And this bacteria, we found, is naturally occurring along the Pacific. That's how we developed the recipe for the Red Hawk. We could not make that cheese in Petaluma. It's a different air, it's a different microclimate. 
Whether it's in the high-tech lab of the scientist or the flavor lab of the connoisseur, it's a savory time to innovate and experiment with cheese. Cheese is still evolving. We're still gaining new varieties of cheese. We're still adding new types of bacteria to create new flavors in cheese. And with artisanal cheese production, that's only expanding and it will only expand into the future.